Dr. Hi. David, Hi. welcome Hi. to Chucker Hi. Island. Hi. This Thank is you very Jenna, much. Jenna and Gavin. Hello, Gemma. Hello, Gavin. Dr. David, I believe you've got a game for him to play. I have. Eh? I can't wait. Should we all go down the beach together? For the celebrity challenge? Come on, yes, let's go to the celebrity let's go. challenge. Go on, yes. Dr. David. <laughs> These are the two patients, and what the game is, the game is that you have to put five of these onto each patient in the time that's given. Do you think you can do that? Easy. Easy. Oh, lovely. All right, then. Are you ready? Yeah. Shall we go? Now, stomach upsets are food poisoning, and that's vomiting and or diarrhoea. And, uh, yeah, the D word. I said it. I said it. And what, the reason for that is that in this country, bacteria sit in our guts, and they help us digest food. Now, when you go on holiday, there are lots of different bacteria that are around, and they can upset you, and they come from food and from water. So, really, the top tips are be very, very careful with water. You mustn't drink tap water. It really isn't safe. Drink bottled water and make sure the seal is intact. And the reason for that is that in some restaurants, you finish your water, and they fill it up from the tap. Oh. So you can run into lots of problems. And beware ice, because they make that from tap water, tap obviously. Water. Um, the other thing is about salads, beware those because they wash them in water as well and peel your fruit. If you're in places like India, they may use uh, manure oh, to, yeah, no, to fertilise them. and dairy in one morning. I know, and then beware street vendors as well uh, because they may have some unpleasant things. So just be careful. If you do get it, then make sure you drink because that's when children run into trouble. They, um, they've sort of got lots of water passing out of them, shall we say. <coughs> Hay fever is an increasing problem and now affects one in six teenagers. It's not caused by hay, but by pollen, giving sufferers watery, itchy eyes, blocked or runny nose, sneezing, headaches and tiredness. It's difficult to imagine that all these effects are caused by something so small. This is the culprit. Each plant like this contains tiny grains of pollen and in fields like this, there's tons of it. Hay fever isn't just a problem in the country. In London, as in other cities, pollution makes it worse. The fumes from car exhaust damage the delicate linings of the nose and makes them more sensitive to pollen. Um, athlete's foot is caused by a fungus, which is also known as tinea pedis, and fungi grow in dark, moist, wet, damp places and so wear better than between your toes. Um, and that's what happens, and the fungus erodes away at the skin, causes the skin to become really flaky and red and itchy, and that's what people notice. What you have to do, wash the feet again, make sure you put talcum powder on them, and then you can put antifungal creams on, something like cl clotrimazole, which is now available over the counter. But the really important thing is make sure you put it on for two weeks after the um, infection's gone, because otherwise it comes back. <laughs> So what can be done to overcome exam stress? Number one. Plan revision as much as you can and try not to cram. Don't stay up all night. Number two. Relaxation is one of the keys to beating exam stress. And here at Bridleymore High School in Redditch, they even give lessons on how to chill out. Number three. Exercise regularly and eat healthily. Number four. They're going to be on the telly tonight. Oh, are they? Yeah, they are. <laughs> Revise in a private space, if possible, away from any distractions. Number five. <laughs> Make sure you talk through your concerns with friends, parents or teachers. Don't worry what everyone else is doing. Stop writing now, please. Pens down. With tests now at 7, 11, 14 and 16, exams are becoming an increasing part of school life. So it's more important than ever to learn to cope with exam stress. This is Dr. David Bull for Newsround in Redditch. If you see people who are very depressed, they have poverty of speech, poverty of movement and so on, but they have poverty of dress. What that means is that they wear black. If you're very manic, you come in in really bright colours. You come in big jangly earrings, big shoes and big dresses. Mm. And it's very interesting that if you wear colours, I'm sure of this, that if you look good, you feel better, you perform better and you feel better. Listen, Pet, are you saying I don't look good in black? I wouldn't dare say that, obviously, <laughs> more than my life is worth. But um, I think it's very, very interesting. I think it really does add that spice to your life. So I'm a great believer. But first of all, it is rare for it to happen. I know that's no consolation for you. Um, it's about one in every 10,000 operations, which, you know, and it's just horrendous if it's your operation. The second thing is it was an emergency caesarean, so there was a certain amount of 
not panic, but there was a certain amount of necessity to move quickly, mm -hmm. and that's going to make, affect things. The third thing is that when you're administering anaesthetics to, to ladies who are pregnant, you have to be very, very careful with the dose you give because it affects the child. Mm -hmm. And I know all that will have gone yeah. through, through their mind. The problem is it is very difficult for anaesthetists in, in a very difficult situation where everyone is a bit stressed. You're looking at monitors, heart rate, blood pressure and so on. There's no actual monitor to tell you, you know, someone is appropriately anaesthetised. Um, but that's yes. changing. <laughs> yes, 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 you both know about yes. it. Dr. That's Professor right. In, that's Jones. right. Professor yeah. Gareth Jones is at the University of Cambridge and he's actually developing this monitor, yeah, as you it's know. It's amazing. Yeah. Every hospital should have one. Dr. Dave. Good morning, Kirsten. I'm eating a sticky bun. Yes, and I'm not. Richard said we were eating it, but only you are. Kirsten, what is this? It's my breakfast. But Kirsten, look at it. It's full of sugar. It's not very good for you. But I have to eat something. I've got up very, very early. I know, but instead of this, why not eat something like this? What, a huge comedy banana? <laughs> no, not quite. <laughs> All this very, very attractive cardboard apple. <laughs> <laughs> what you should be eating is, is fruit. It's better. It's easy to eat, isn't it? You can eat it on the run. Um, and that is just full of sugar. It's not very good for you. Oh, but why is breakfast so important? Well, breakfast is important, and people say it's the most important meal of the day because uh, for those lucky people who've had 10 hours sleep yeah. or so, breakfast <laughs> does that. It breaks the fast, and so your body needs energy. But this gives you short-term energy. But the problem is that this is reflected in how healthy you feel, and if you eat healthily, then you're going to be healthy later on. But is it better that I eat something rather than nothing? Well, it is, that's right. And in fact, there's a very good study to show that children who have breakfast actually do better in school than children who don't have breakfast. Look at this, you've really gone to I town. I know, yeah, look you? at this. Dr. Dave's dying, and look at the outfit. I know, well, in fact, I thought I'd be a little bit French this morning. A little bit, oh la la. Oh la la, yes, le petit déjeuner. The point of all this is to cook us a healthy breakfast, Yeah, yes? I wasn't cooking, was I? No, you haven't really, have you? Well, go ahead anyway, what, what right, are you Right, well, over do? here is the sort of food that you eat. My you breakfast. See? And look at that, that's full of sugar, and we've discussed that's not very good for you. Oh, no. And um, so what we're going to go on to now is to, to my muesli. Now, in fact, did you know that it was a doctor who first prescribed muesli to his patients because he thought it was so good? I didn't know. Yeah, well, I thought it was just sawdust, actually. No, well, this is the basic ingredients, and we've sort of cheated. I've cheated a bit here, as you see. So um, what's in here is sort of um, oats and barley and all sorts of things. So you can put that in. I might just pop that in. Oh, I can't stop. You don't need an oversized bowl to do this at <laughs> Well, you do, actually, because they do on the cookery program. Oh, so right, I have, right. I have one. And then try and take the lid off the milk. And, um, <laughs> oh, excellent. It's uh, not open. <laughs> and um, basically, I'm just going to add some milk into that. And that um, is semi-skim milk. You can actually add, add uh, yoghurt as well, but I'm not going to because I think it makes a bit of a mess. Right. I think I've put far too much milk I'll in there. that. Yeah, it's <laughs> but a bit anyway. gooey. Yeah, yeah. Let's um, add some of these now. Let's now, what do we need the muesli for? Well, the muesli is full of fibre, and fibre is really important because it reduces your cholesterol um, and also uh, helps... Um, Makes you go to the your back. Yeah. <laughs> but we're not going to talk about that because I get told off. OK, so, so adding... I've added some raisins and sultanas now. Look at this. Right. A bit less sloppy. Apart from being fun, exercise is great for your whole body. It makes your bones strong and healthy, can improve your mood and concentration, and most importantly, protects you against heart disease in later life. On your marks, get set, go! In November last year, the tragic story of Leah Betts hit the headlines. She died after taking the drug ecstasy at her 18th birthday party. Eight months later, her 12-year-old stepbrother, William, is still coming to terms with what happened. Life without Leah was very different. I don't have a sister coming round every weekend. I don't have my favourite sister. I don't have anyone to turn to. You really want her back, don't you? I want her back, yes. Drug misuse is a massive problem. Many believe illegal drugs are easier to get hold of than ever before, and children are being targeted. According to a recent report, nearly half of Britain's school children have been offered drugs. What's more worrying is that children as young as 11 are experimenting with them. The government is very worried about the situation and has accepted that many of their previous anti-drugs campaigns simply telling children to say no when they're offered drugs haven't been as successful as they'd hoped. The leader of the House of Commons, Tony Newton, now believes children need to know the facts. Some people would disagree with me, but I think the evidence both here and in the United States suggests that just say no, uh, especially coming from people very much older who look as if they may have come from a different world, doesn't work. 
All illegal drugs have their problems, but there's particular concern about the increase in use of ecstasy, or E as it's known. Although it gives people energy, it also switches off the body's temperature control. This means people overheat and become dehydrated, which is extremely dangerous. Users need to drink a pint of water an hour, but too much is also dangerous. E makes blood pressure rise and puts a lot of strain on the heart. It can also lead to liver and kidney failure. E can cause anxiety and depression, and new evidence suggests that it can cause long-term mental damage. William wishes his sister Leah had known how harmful drugs can be. She knew nothing about this drug. She knew every other drug, LSD, cocaine, heroin, crack, and various other things. But ecstasy, not even mum being the nurse knew about. And if she'd known about what this does, she would not have done this. If I had one wish, it would not to have Leah back, it would be go back in time to teach her about what it would have done, because if I just wished her back, then it might happen again. Leah's family are now doing all they can to persuade other children to steer clear of drugs.